In sports, if you want to be the best, there are no off days. Welcome into the No Off Days podcast. We got Chris Cato. We've got BK in the booth. I am Scott Smith, and we are down to now the final four. I mean, this is it. I mean, the final, the final four in the cake bracket. Of course, I'm talking to talking about, but uh, <laughs> hoops is kind of whittling itself down as well. This is an exciting time of year, and I'm, I'm particularly excited about this show. And I don't know if I should say who's our guest or if I should wait for Brian to do that introduction. I kind of, I kind of don't know what to do. You say it in case people are about to tune out. Say it. Okay. Quickly. Ice Cube is on the yeah. show. Ice Cube yeah. is on the show. The Ice Cube. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Not, Not just a cube yes. of ice. <laughs> Because we would do that. We, yes, we've yeah. done that before. We would before. do a big tease, yeah. say who's on the show, and then we'd find some way to, you know, of course, right. Ice Cube is not coming on the Nod Pod. Why would he do that? Well, I don't know. Maybe why? he has something the to promote. The question is, why wouldn't he after oh. this interview? Right. Yeah, we can't wait to Maybe he him. wants to talk about cake. Yeah. Well, this is the place to do it. This is, this is the place. So, yeah, by, by the end of the show, we will reveal what is the championship matchup, the yes. championship. Mm-hmm. So, the, the Frosted Four. Uh, we had, we, remind we started me. voting last week. Yes. So it was chocolate cake against carrot cake, and we mm. know you're all in for carrot. Team carrot. Uh, we had on the other side of the bracket um, red velvet against cheesecake, and that one I, I think I called for the cheesecake upset because they were our three seed and, and red velvet was our two. But again, this as mentioned, this has gone to chalk. It's all been the top four seeds. It's been as, the favorites, yeah. As as predicted off the top from that selection committee that did such a great job, even though uh, we were assaulted. I was, at least. You uh, were, yeah. Yeah, you weren't, but you should have been. Um, <laughs> I will be. Anyway, so yeah, we will reveal the update at the end of the show, who is on to the championship. And then we, then we will, uh, of course, tell you how to get voting for a whole nother week of voting we got to get it right, right? Or we can we We've eat cake this far are we eating cake on this episode yes we do okay we, we have cake Excellent. on that's this all, week's that's episode that's the reason i came that and, and ice uh, cube. i have not let anybody else in the in the building know that oh. cake is here you are the only one that knows okay. so uh we will get it to ourselves <laughs> unlike last time uh let's bring in brian king uh bk i'm sorry <laughs> No. I would ask you at this point what's on the show, but uh, I kind of stole your thunder, didn't no, I? No, that's good, man. You're, you're pumped about it. We're, that's a great show. This may be the all-time guest, don't you think? Uh, we may have topped Crazy George Henderson, <laughs> well, finally. Was, I, well, let's – come on now. <laughs> I, Get him off me! <laughs> I don't know. If he tells awesome. If he tells stories like Crazy George did. I don't know. Do, do you think he would bring a drum with him? Uh a snare drum? Yeah. Ice Cube? Or, or, ah, ice Cube. He but, might. I don't know. He's a music producer. Yeah. He could yeah. have a snare drum yeah. in his office somewhere. Can I get a beat? What do you think about my shirt this week, Brian? Do you I like know. it? I know. I forgot to wear, okay. wear mine. I went Tell everybody blue. that's listening <laughs> that doesn't know. Well, Brian and I are happy because, you know, we, we are a uh, football school. We're Alabama fans. We usually, by the time March rolls around, what are we doing, Brian? We're watching spring, spring football. football. Yeah, we're looking at the roster. You know, who's going to play wide receiver this year? And basketball's just a, a foregone conclusion. So many springs, Brian and I, as, as young children growing up in the plains and hills of Alabama, would, would long for a moment like this where our basketball team could have something to play yeah. for beyond – made several Sweet 16s but could never punch past the Sweet 16 yeah. ball. And the beauty is by the time that most people are watching this, uh, Alabama's already eliminated. No, so. no. Th- this, no. <laughs> people will watch this before Saturday, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, congratulations. It, it's That's pretty cool. I mean, hey, when I saw Clemson-Alabama rematch, I thought this was, you know, again, national championship up for dra- grabs on the football field at Raymond James Stadium. But, uh, no, your, your basketball program deserves the kudos, and uh, you, got, you got a chance. You got a chance. Not a real good chance. Playing, but <laughs> playing UConn that <laughs> could UConn be has, a, They've been destroying could, teams. Could be in but, fourth place in the NBA East right now. But, yeah, hey, probably. we're in there. Yeah. It's a great so, feeling. So congrats on, the, on hey, that, BK. Um, and on the rest of the show, uh, is there anything else that we can talk about? Uh, or did I just spoil everything? Well, I think well, you hit the cakes, right? Mm-hmm. We got cakes. So, yeah, the voting for this week for the cake still through the roof. Holy cow. This, I, I didn't think anything could top cereal. The, the cake voting we, has been blowing struck, up. It seems to have struck a chord, yeah. Oh, and, almost, and almost every night in that newsroom in there that I have to spend much of my life chained to my yeah. desk in there, there is some debate going on. It, it usually happens during the week that the new bracket comes out and they see who was eliminated. There are such people that are, are aficionados of pineapple upside Self, down. Self-appointed. Or, yes. Self, self-appointed. And then this <laughs> people were coming to blows the other day about cheesecake and, and half the room saying, cake. it's not a cake. It's not. And I'm like, guys, we're at this point now. We're in the final four. It's a cake. Okay. We're treating it as a cake. <laughs> well, I have heard, I have heard that if, if 
cheesecake, and we're not revealing anything yet. If right. cheesecake were to win the whole thing, that there might be a not so silent contingent that rises up and calls for a recount. They demand a recount. They demand that it be thrown out because of a technicality, that it's not actually a cake. They were all present and had the chance to appear in the committee meeting room That's that true. day we seated all of this. And Correct. not one person came in there and said, do not put cheesecake in this and tournament. quite frankly, even if they had, I would have ignored right. them. <laughs> it is cheese cake, ladies and gentlemen. Whoever came up with the naming rights to the actual food item that we're discussing, uh, that, I think that carries more weight than the shape or whether it's baked or whether it has flour or whether it has a certain crust. What I don't care about any of that. It's called cheesecake. It's in the cake bracket. Can you cut a slice of it? Can you stick birthday candles in it? Yes and yes. Yes. All right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for the update. And right. just <laughs> looking so darn handsome today. That yeah. is Brian King, ladies and gentlemen. We'll catch up with you in a little bit. If you're listening Thanks, and you want to watch, go to fox13news.com slash nipod. If you're watching and you want to listen or subscribe, take out your phone, zap the QR code on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right there. There you can find all of our shows. Subscribe at fox13news.com slash nipod. So as mentioned, uh, we are down to the final four. Uh, and UConn is, I mean, they're the presumptive favorite. They were going in. Uh, they are destroying everybody that they play. Play. Maybe that changes against Alabama. Uh, but what are your kind of reaction? Well, let me let me lead with this. This is where I wanted to start. Okay. About a year ago at this time, uh, we had our um, Nance Week podcast. It was the Nance podcast. It was all about Jim Nance because this is has been Nance Week. Yes. I mean, it, it kind of leads, well, fo- next week, actually. It follows the championship game. Of course, he has been the voice for so many years of March Madness, and it leads right into the Masters where, you know, he has his his epic um, sayings and, and all the, the things that we love about Jim. Right. But what Ian Eagle has kind of taken over now. Your, your thoughts. I know you're a man that listens to the call. You care about these sort of things. <laughs> We might want to bring Brian back in if he wanted to discuss it. Uh, what do you think about the job Ian Eagle has done? And, and should we call this the Eagle has landed? I did not know you were going there. Uh, I think Ian Eagle has done a fantastic okay, job yeah. right. of right. uh, narrating this journey that has brought us to the <laughs> Final Four so far. I, I miss I Jim what, what, I what miss, do you want me to say? I miss Jim Nance. I mean. I miss the man. Okay. All right. uh, I miss his musk. All right. But uh, anyway, to the basketball. Uh, your big takeaways so far uh, to this point. And uh, is there anything that can slow down UConn? Um, I don't know. I don't think so, slowing down UConn. I will say big takeaway tournament overall was there was a lot of, just like the cake bracket, a lot of chalk in the first couple of rounds. We all got excited. We filled out our brackets. We made dumb picks like me picking McNeese State and teams like that to, to make it to the Sweet 16. And it was a lot of heavy favorites winning and moving on. Not a lot of upsets. But when we got down to the Sweet 16, there was some really good basketball. Yeah. And there were you did start to see some upsets. And now we have... One of these final four teams, the run that they have made is absolutely incredible. And I'm talking about 11 seed NC State, uh, only the sixth 11 seed to ever make it to a final four. Um, And this was a team that was not even near the bubble before the ACC tournament started. They had lost. They lost 14 games. They needed to win the ACC tournament to get in. They do that, but only because of a miraculous sequence of events against Virginia in that ACC tournament. Virginia's up three with five seconds left, shooting free a free throw that would put the game out of reach. They miss the free throw. NC State grabs it. This guy throws up a prayer that goes in off the backboard, ties it. They go to overtime. NC State wins. If not for that, they wouldn't have been in the tournament anyway. And here they are. They've really been playing solid uh, defense, and they haven't been turning the ball over in the tournament. And then they take Duke down for a second time uh, in the Elite Eight. And now they're on the doorstep. They've got a shot against Purdue. I think it's a fascinating matchup because Purdue is obviously running everything through their big man, Zach Eady, 7'4", probably your repeat Naismith National Player of the Year. But, you know, NC State has a pretty big guy, too. Yeah, we, you know, we talk about that at the beginning of the, of the tournament. Like, who are the guys that have a ch- – who are the dark horse teams? And then who are the guys that will make, make a name for themselves in this tournament? And you're mentioning one, DJ Burns for, for NC State. I mean, the guy – I mean, he's huge. He's got a great jumper. Uh, he can score from anywhere on the court. That little fadeaway baseline – number i mean is very agile. unstoppable yeah. yeah uh but he's like this bigger larger than life personality that is just it's perfect for the tournament yeah you know and this is an nc state team that especially when they play in duke <laughs> they're easy <laughs> to root for man and so you you do kind of hope that this cinderella run 
continues for them. You know, whether whether it does or not, you know, we'll find out, I guess. But uh, but stars are born in the NCAA tournament, and uh, for him, that is that is for sure one. I, mean, I think it was a, I know it was at least a season high against Duke, twenty nine points that he scored. Talking a little, jabbing a little bit yeah. with some of the Blue Devil fans. So love that. Um, you know, on the other side, uh, you mentioned Edie. I mean, this guy is just uh, that. That's why Purdue is just there's such a hard team there's just no way to stop this guy i mean the the guy that was guarding him in in the in the elite eight game fouled out really early so in the quickly, game yeah i mean it was just yeah he, he is uh he's enormous well, seven you, foot four and he's 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 tough to, you, to handle you really can't stop him when he can build a house in the paint in the lane which he did against tennessee in that uh, game you were referencing there i mean my goodness the guy is just camping out down there they kick it down to him he holds it for a couple seconds, tosses it back out, and stays there and doesn't move. And you got Rick Barnes, the Tennessee coach over there, telling the refs, please, give give me five seconds in the lane. I right. would love that. Right. And so I do wonder if there is a – the refs are going to hear this. I wonder if there's an overcorrection almost, and we start to see in this game against NC State them – uh, blow the whistle on on him establishing himself down there. That could be a factor. Yeah, I mean, I I, I do think that if had Tennessee had everybody, you know, other than Connect shooting the ball, yeah, anybody other than Connect shooting the ball, I think Tennessee would have beaten that team. But um, yeah, Ziegler went. Um, he went, real he went cold. Yeah. Um, so UConn, obviously, we we mentioned they they've been destroying teams, and um, you know, head coach Dan Hurley. Uh, part of it has to do with these. Um, bizarre pregame superstitions I'm told <laughs> so he he consumes exactly eight m&ms prior to games why is it eight I, we don't know don't know is didn't, it I, did, I didn't do a lot of digging on this <laughs> is it color dependent I, <laughs> I don't know yeah uh, do they all taste the same by the way oh. yeah i think that, i think they do uh, a, a cup of bulletproof coffee on the sideline okay um and then of course the the clothing which i think is um you know obviously this has gone on for years you know if, Folks, baseball players known to be superstitious, wear the same socks. Um, he wears the same suit, same socks, and the same underwear, Chris. Red dragon underwear. Is this a problem? Is this a problem? Red dragon underwear? What is this? What is he a child? Yes. What, are these pajamas? <laughs> but he, he's apparently his wife brings this portable like hand washer uh, <laughs> with him. So that he can wash his favorite. <laughs> so pair they of are underwear. washed. These yeah. underwear are clean. Well, reportedly, okay. yeah. You know, I don't yeah. know how good she does on. You know, maybe it's a couple games after a couple games. But yeah, I, that's uh, it's such a bizarre thing, and I don't know why yeah. he would tell everybody that. He made the remark on uh, in the post game interview the other yeah. day on the court. It said, "Oh, Andrea is going to Andrea is his wife. Andrea is going to have to. She get doesn't the, get enough TV time. She's going to have to get that hand washer out <laughs> because I, I mean." Come on, Dan. Can't you wash your old underwear? Or yeah. Make your wife carry around this yeah. hand washer yeah, on road was, games. That was a little demeaning. Yeah, at the same time. But uh, how about that? Some magic underwear. Did you have uh, it, it, from your playing days and any I never, at any point? Did you no. have a superstitious piece of clothing or no. anything? Uh, uh, well, in in high school, my senior year, I think I wore the same undershirt for every game. Uh, but. Uh, I don't know if that was superstition or I, I only had like three shirts there, Chris. So that was uh, that was probably <laughs> it was just out of, out of just, yeah, just out of necessity. <laughs> no doubt. Did you wash it? Yeah, Did probably you? not. Uh, <laughs> probably stunk to high heaven. No, I never got. I never was superstitious about anything. I mean, I'm probably more super superstitious in like watching games than I am. Yeah. Like as a you know, whenever I played, so definitely that's uh, how, that's how I roll too. Like I feel like if I don't sit in the right spot, it's not going to turn out well for yeah. Alabama. Yeah. Last time you watched Alabama, you uh, you were eating popcorn. You were sitting on the left of your couch, and you had one foot up on the coffee table, right? Yes. And so and it's got to replicate that. It's got to be the same foot. Uh, yeah. Major League Baseball. Uh, about a week into the season now, um, you know, you don't want to read too much into this, but there are some things that you that I. You know, look, last week we made dark horse predictions, Chris, and I <laughs> feel like a weekend I'm going to beat my chest a little bit. Oh, I said the Tigers too. are making the playoffs, and the Tigers are 4-0 <laughs> leading the division right now. I also mentioned the Mariners as one of my dark horses. They're in second place, 3-2, and two, strong start. You are cashing in these receipts Chris, one, one week into the season. I believe, <laughs> did you say uh, the Padres? No, I said I don't know that the uh, Padres will be good. Okay. Remember, okay. you, well, you said the Padres. Diamondbacks 3-2, and two, struggling. I said the Cubs. Stuff, How are the Cubs so. doing? <laughs> uh, I, let me see. I didn't know we were checking our yeah. homework this no, early in the season. we're doing it already. Let's see. The Cubs, as we sit. Now, this is this is really early, obviously, in the week when we tape this. But uh, the Cubs are sitting at 
Oh, give me something, Cubbies. Ooh, two and two. See, they told you. Two and two, but they've won two in a row. They're so in there. They've, they started out a little cold, and they're heating up. So they're anyway. on fire. Um, now, I mean, obviously, you don't want to read too much into this stuff, but I, I do look at a Dodgers team that's already allowed 34 runs. I mean, that's that's pretty significant for a team that you know it should be solid all the way across the board. Uh, Otani, yet to hit a home run. I mean, I'm just saying, he's hitting 267. I pay the guy $700 million. I kind of want to get some more run production. Yeah. He's got three RBIs already through, I think, and they played more games than anybody. I want to say they're at like nine games as we tape this. Um, somewhere around there, seven games maybe, that's right. He hasn't pitched an inning either. Yeah. He's been well, useless. Well, yeah, that's going to be it. <laughs> that may be a minute. Uh, so, I don't know. I, yeah. You don't want to read too much into this. this um, we got a Phillies team, you know, for as good as they were last year. They've got the worst ERA in Major League Baseball right now, uh, 7.30. So, I don't know. I'm just saying, you know. I don't Everything know if- will, you know, it always adjusts back to the mean, right? Because I remember the Astros started off last season, like, really but The Astros rough. always adjust to the mean. They do. Not yes. every team does, yeah. though. That's – uh, all right, in, in the NFL, uh, quickly, I want to go over some of these because I thought they were interesting. They had uh, they, they had uh, released incentive distributions for players that earned bonuses, that earned extra money. They reached certain incentives on their contract and how much money they got paid. And uh, and so, you know, I don't know some of these guys. Uh, John Simpson was number one in the NFL. They oh, were, yeah, I know I, John. I love how they rank them. Mm-hmm. Who, what does John play? John plays guard now for the Ravens or for the Jets, but he played for the Ravens last season. How about that? Good yeah. job. Uh, yeah, so he made nine hundred and seventy, almost nine hundred seventy-five thousand dollars last year uh, in incentives. So that, that's pretty significant. Um, Reed Blankenship, safety for the Eagles, uh, just just south of that, nine twenty. Uh, we work our way down the list here and uh, look at Brock Purdy. He yeah, made seven hundred and forty thousand dollars in incentives. No, isn't Mr. that a, that's Irrelevant. about double his salary, right? Uh, yeah, or, or yeah. close to it. No, that's yeah. I'm not sure where that is in 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 in, in terms of his entire salary, but um, yeah, I got to think that it's close. Uh, and how about this? All the way down the list, we come to Aaron Rodgers, uh, who made eighty one dollars in incentives <laughs> last year. How do they figure this? I don't. Inse- I have no idea. He was it, hurt do, on the third snap of the season, do you have right? To, is it seconds? Is it like just checking in? I mean, what incentive would trigger just this? I guess a starting a game is got to be That's some something. level of incentive. I think it's based on plays that you're on the field, though. And he was on the field for three plays, so I don't know how. But I thought incentives were triggered once you reached a certain like level. So maybe it was like. If you well, have a certain percentage of games that you start, I don't know. You're it usually the guy exce- that knows the stuff. This is you're, you're usually the contract and incentive guy, but I'll read you something here okay, about good, this good. is the uh, performance-based pay. And so there's a calculation they use. And to calculate it, um, they take the players' uh, regular season total plays played on offense, defense, special teams, whatever, and they divide that by their compensation, which is each – players regular season full salary including prorated signing bonus earned incentives so it sounds like a way to make sure that players that uh, don't have a big salary um, but wind up maybe in a support role that you know they were a backup safety or something but they come in early in the season like Reed Blankenship and end up playing a majority of the snaps some way to compensate them Um, you know and if you're a guy who like Aaron Rodgers who already has a giant salary anyway even if you play, just because of the calculation, even if you play three snaps, you're going to get some pocket change, which is what he got. Yeah. Well, I wonder if he said, uh, you know what? I, my bonus check just came in, guys. Lunch is on me. Lunch is on me. Uh, let's go get some Subway sandwiches. Keep it under $81. Yeah. Maybe we can invest, invest this into my uh, my primary when I roll, run for vice president. Maybe something like that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where the money goes. It's got to be above board, obviously. If it's That's right. The, political slush fund there. We don't want that to happen. You know what? I, I can't contain myself anymore, Chris. I, we have to get to our guest, and we will do that on the other side. Ice Cube is joining the No Off Days podcast when we come back. Today is a good day. Today is a good day. 
Welcome back to the No Off Days podcast, Chris. I'm not sure even how to introduce our guest today. Uh, rapper, actor, producer, director, founder of the Big Three, Three on Three Basketball <laughs> League. How shall I introduce the icon? Let's bring in Ice Cube <laughs> joining the Knob Pod. Awesome to have you, Ice Cube. All right, so let's let's start with hoops because you're bringing this event to Tampa, our own backyard. Uh, I got you on the calendar for June 22nd at the Yingling Center, the seventh season of Big Three kicks off here on June 15th. Uh, I mean, what are we in for this season? Why why should folks here in Tampa be clamoring for some tickets? I mean, you know, we're the hottest thing in town. You know, it's a, it's a great event. You're going to see six games for the price of one. You know, our games are about, you know, 40 minutes apiece. So, you know, so it's, it's a great event to uh, bring the family to. It's an affordable ticket. You're going to see real basketball. And, you know, I don't know what they're doing in the NBA right now, but in the big three, they play for real, um, real defense, you know, hard nose three on three. And, and you got pros doing it, seven footers. Uh, it's the spectacle. Yeah, I got to say, for people who haven't watched, you're missing out because yeah. it is like nonstop action. You guys have a 14 second shot clock. Uh, there's no game clock. First team to 50, win by, win by two wins. And you've got a, a four pointer. You got a three four point circles the old four out there. Four point bucket. Yeah, the old four point Wish bucket. I had that in my day. It really is an exciting product, and here you are in year seven. It, has this ice cube has, has big three uh, become everything that you kind of envisioned it would when you launched this in twenty seventeen? Everything and more. You know, it's uh, it's rare that new uh, leagues are accepted. Uh, if you really think about it. Um, there's kind of like a new league coming out every year of something and to uh, to be accepted and to be debated um, and to be, you know, basically, uh, you know, stamped by some of the biggest names in basketball. You know, we, we have Hall of Fame coaches like Dr. J and and Iceman and, you know, Rick Barry, uh, Nancy Lieberman, Lisa Leslie. Uh, it, so it's it's star studded and and it's great to have you know these pillars of of basketball endorse the league. You know our players are great. Some of them are fresh out the NBA. Some of them uh, play overseas, so they're you know they're they're really ballers all over the world. And some of them are young guys who haven't got a good look yet. And so uh, it's great to see this mixture of talent on the three on three level because it's a different game. It's totally different than five on five. It's uh, faster, it's more physical, it's more personal. Uh, you have to be an all around player. You have to be able to pass, dribble, shoot and defend to have success in the big three. I wonder if a resume that included 41 points against uh, LSU last night would be something that would be appealing last night in the women's game. Uh, I I know that the big story has been Caitlin Clark, right? Number one, she's going to be the number one overall pick in the WNBA, and now there's this potential offer uh, that is rumored to be around $5 million coming from the big three. I mean, how did you guys come up with – with the offer, the idea to bring in what is arguably the the biggest name in, in women's college basketball that we've had in quite some time. Well, you know, we think she can be successful against uh, our players. Uh, if you really look at our league and how it's progressed over the last seven years, you know, guards really shine. Um, and so, you know, if she was a bigger player. We had looked at uh, Meyer Moore. A few years back, uh, but a bigger player would have a little more trouble. You know, the paint is very physical in the big three. So, you know, first of all, we we felt like she could have success. She has a you know amazing range, four point range, without a doubt. And you know, with the right coach and the right schemes, we think she could uh, she can get off. And hey, you know, she's a phenomenon. Uh, 12.3 million people watched the game yesterday. Uh, so that's undeniable star power. And so to to have her a part of the big three, um, you know, we wouldn't be doing our job if we didn't go after her and, and still allow her to play in the uh, WNBA. We think we can make it work. Well, we know we can. So 
Uh, it's really, you know, the ball's in their court, so to speak. And, um, you know, we, we're we just waiting for a positive, uh, you know, a positive <laughs> answer. Yeah, well, I, I, I got to say, uh, $5 million for yeah. playing 10 games, that's if they make the championship. Not bad money there. Yeah, life-changing for sure. But have you have you guys had any uh, response from her camp yet? Or I'm sure they're still focused at this time on that women's final four. Yeah, there's been dialogue for a couple of weeks now. Um, it's you know we didn't expect this uh, news to come out. It leaked, and so we had to you know make sure we uh, you know set the record straight. And so we want her to concentrate, of course, on. Um, playing in the NCAA Final Four. Um, hopefully she'll make it to the championship game and and win. Uh, you know, so, but, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, if she gets knocked out, we'd love to have her. Whenever she makes a decision, we're, we're waiting. We're all ears. And I think what is key is, as you mentioned, is, is that this is not detracting away from what her WNBA pursuits would be. This would just be an addition. This would be an extra cherry on top. Obviously, the big name ID benefits you. She's a great player. Uh, but this, without question, financially could impact her in a major way. And when you look at, at where the WNBA salaries are, I mean, it's not even comparable, right? Oh, uh, yeah. You know, I think it would be a great uh, statement. It will be a great moment for women's sports. Um, if you look at the big three, we have, uh, you know, people laughed at us when we brought in Nancy Lieberman to coach the guys. What did she do? She won a championship her first year and became coach of the year. People laughed at us when we brought in Lisa Leslie. And what did she do? She won a championship her first year in 2019 and became the coach of the year. So, you know, we're we're a league that's, you know, we say we're changing the game and we mean it. We want to change it for the better. And uh adding her to to come to Tampa, you know, wouldn't y'all want to see it, see her up close out there in Tampa on June twenty second? Yeah, we might yeah, get might yeah. get a ticket I might to that. Have to get yeah. that right. That would be a, sure. that would be a hot ticket at the Yingling Got Center. Doubt, there. Man, you better get a ticket. Come on, Tampa. Look. <laughs> yeah. we, we came there in uh in twenty uh two. And it was great, but it was short notice. So now we're giving people a long runway. It's going to be great. Um, I got a concert with the, with the Red Hot Chili Peppers the night before. Oh, nice. So we're going to make it an Ice Cube weekend. Come on through. And <laughs> hey, that, in fun. June, it is hot here. We need an Ice Cube weekend <laughs> yeah, in June sure. here in Tampa. <laughs> That's phenomenal. Well, you look, I, you know, I want to talk about your what you've done with basketball for the broader world, for the broader community too. I mean, we all know that you you're kind of synonymous with basketball. You know, you messed around and got a triple double, but <laughs> you also have been recognized by the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame in February. They gave you the inaugural and appropriately named Ice Cube Impact Award, uh, which acknowledges people that have made a lot of substantial contributions to their community off the court. What did that mean to you to be honored by the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame? Blown away, you know. It not in my wildest dreams uh, would I ever think that I would, you know, um, be recognized in the Hall of Fame for my work in basketball. You know, I've loved basketball since I was, you know, knee high to a horse fly. And so to be able to, um, to you know, play the game, have fun, be a fan of the game, um, you know, create this amazing league and then get recognized by, you know, the – the you know upper echelon of basketball you know in the Naismith uh, Basketball Hall of Fame is just you know it's like it's like when we made it to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with NWA it's some it's something that you just never count on but when when it happens you're extremely grateful um, and you you know you want to thank all the people that you know helped you get here you know, I, I, don't, I don't do this alone we have a great league. And to be recognized, it's just, uh, you know, it, it, it really touched my heart. Well, we are just getting warmed up with Ice Cube. More to come on the other side as we dive into we'll talk a little music, talk a little sports. More with Cube on the other side. You know, I'm wondering if over the years, I mean, we obviously know that you are – 
you are L.A. in many ways, and, and you've rocked the Raiders gear for so long, and the Dodgers, you're a fan of SoCal teams. Um, and we've seen kind of players take an exercise agency as they have higher career earnings and, and they try to get a, a slice of ownership. For you, obviously, you start the big three. You found a new league. Have you ever thought about purchasing – I mean, I see Tom Brady trying to get a slice of the Raiders, but I don't see Ice Cube. Have you ever tried to get in on any of that? No, nah, you know, I don't, I don't want to be a team owner. You know, I own a league, and, you know, that's enough. And, you know, I want to stay a fan. So you know, I never thought about, you know, buying the Raiders, you know, I, as an artist myself, you know, when when you can be just a regular fan, you jump at it. So when it comes to football, I love to sit in my seat and yell at everybody making the decisions <laughs> and, and, you know, <laughs> and, the, and the players on the field and, and just eat popcorn. But with this league, you know, we are selling teams and we're in a, we in a you know, position where we are taking on owners. And so, you know, I got my hands full with the big three. So, no, thank you. Well, well clear something up for me here when you talk about selling teams and owners because Lil Dirk puts out a tweet last night after watching, you know, Caitlin Clark's performance. And he appears to offer her $10 million to come play for his big three. Does Lil Dirk now own a, a team in the big three or, or what is this? No, he don't own the team in the big three, but he can. You know, he need to holler at me, then he can recruit <laughs> real. Uh, we got some great going on. Um, you know, twelve teams. We're gonna expand to, to sixteen. You know, hopefully twenty four. And hey, we got a great league going on. It's not easy to start a league, so uh, come ride with your homeboy Ice Cube. And He's dudes. taking all offers. Yeah, still making music too. I. When does the new album come out? We looking at June. Um, we, you know, we mixing songs, uh, getting all, you know, the contracts done, clearing samples, getting all our visuals cocked and loaded. So by June, we think we'll be ready to uh, let it go. And uh, and you'll be in Tampa in June to give us a, a sample. It's a big month. It is a big month. On, hey, uh, more might be yeah. might be the day we drop. You never know. Well, I hope so. More importantly, when is Last Friday coming out? Are we ever gonna get Last <laughs> Friday? You know, it, it what's cool is uh I've been talking to Warner Brothers on and off, and it looks like we're trying to get something done. So. You know what I mean? Keep your fingers crossed and, uh, you know, make a couple of call phone calls for me and we, we might can get it done soon. Can I ask you one last music-related question? If you could take the best of any certain rapper and kind of create a hybrid best of all time, what would that look like? How, how would Ice Cube concoct that? Uh, I'll just look in the mirror. Ah, oh, there we go, baby. There he is. That's the answer I wanted. <laughs> Hey, if yeah, you yeah. if you were a coach and you got a big three in rap, you were a coach, you got to draft three rappers to compete against another team. That's essentially the question team. I think I was asking. I'm trying to get at it another way here. <laughs> I'm go. trying to get at it another way. You can't pick ice. You can't draft Ice Cube. You got to draft three rappers on your big three. Okay. Um, I mean, Tupac, Biggie. I don't think you can go wrong with Lil Wayne. Okay. That'd be a pretty formidable lineup there. I, I, and before we let you go, if I'd be just remiss if I didn't ask you what we're doing here on our podcast is we we have our cake bracket. Yes, this is very and we, important. We've we've had, we started with sixteen cakes. Yeah. I know this is something you've probably never been asked before, but I've got to ask you between chocolate cake, cheesecake, red velvet cake, and carrot cake, what do you think is the best? A chocolate. Yeah. There we go. I feel like chocolate is like the Yukon of this bracket right here, right yeah. now. There may not, there may not be an upset. Well, you can't, you can't beat it. It's you can't beat, beat, you can't beat chocolate. You can't beat Ice Cube coming to Tampa June twenty second. We got a concert. We got Big Three hoops. If you want tickets, go to Big Three dot com slash tickets and catch their stop coming to the Bay Area and the Yingling Center on the campus of USF. The Icon. Ice Cube. Thank you so much for your time. Podcast. Thank you so much. Yay. Appreciate it, Ice Appreciate Cube. Appreciate you guys, man. See you guys in uh, June. That's right. With Caitlin Clark or without. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we'll see. Finally, coming up on the No Off Days podcast, it's time, Chris, to eat cake. Does it get better? We went from Ice Cube to time to eat cake. 
We're going to reveal the championship matchup in the cake bracket. Don't go anywhere. Let's Not go. Pods back after this. Go Carrots. Welcome back to the Nod Pod, and it is the moment that you've been waiting for all week. Because Can I say something yeah, first? No, no, no. <laughs> all right. uh, I regret I didn't get to ask Ice Cube my question. And uh, what, was uh, the, what was that? You asked him a bunch of questions. I didn't get to ask him my question about ice cubes, though. Okay. What was that? I, I wanted to about know. the gum or the actual, like, frozen ice? No, I ice? wanted to know what is his preferred shape of frozen ice that's not a cube. Is he going crescent, the kind that our refrigerator? I think it's pebble. Yeah. Yeah. Nugget? Yeah. Nugget yeah. ice. Well, the, the nugget, little, yeah, but pebble nugget same same thing the yeah. tiny soft cylinders yeah of you, course you think that's what you would say everybody would say that you're putting ice words in ice cubes mouth uh i'm fairly confident that that is the that is the preferred ice for most people nobody likes i mean unless it's a giant cube that would go with like a bourbon or something i was thinking like there's ice balls there's that that go in your cocktail yeah, but that, that's just a cooling agent it's not enjoyable people that yeah. like ice they prefer i think i, I can say this conclusively is the it's, nugget it's, ice it's the nugget slash pebble ice yes. well what about crushed ice for slushies and such well it depends is it crushed ice coming out of your refrigerator because that the crusher on refrigerators it doesn't ha, crush it's it not well. really yeah. great now no it's, it's the like, kind it's that like the bartender fine. gives you in a tiki glass <laughs> yeah. so like a blender yeah like yeah blend, it's very yeah. well blended okay i i don't know should we do an is, ice bracket sorry, <laughs> is cube still on the line <laughs> Can we get him? Brian, can we get Ice Cube on the line? Can, can we call him up? We got to get this answered. Okay. We'll do an ice bracket next year. How about that? Uh, I'm told that he is gone and he's never to appear on the Nod Pod again. <laughs> no. Um, all right. Back to the, the oh, business at sorry. hand, which is, of course, all the voting that you guys did last week for the great cake bracket. You have been diligent in your voting all uh, the last couple of weeks. Now we have started with 16 cakes and we are now ready to unveil what is the final two and we are calling it the championship uh but this week the the frosted four we had you know exactly what we had predicted essentially at the beginning when we when we slated our cakes one through 16 it was the top four yeah and so these were your regional one seeds essentially going at it with a right uh, to play in the championship game. And uh, they're all classics, you know, chocolate cake, carrot cake, um, along with red velvet and cheesecake. And, and, you know, if we had to choose, you know, it might just come down to what you, what the mood you're in, right? Yeah, yeah. You're like not. It's, it's not necessarily like um, uh, objective, right? Exactly. But, but we're going to make it objective. <laughs> so let's reveal uh, the results of the Frosted Four. All right, here uh, we go. One seed, chocolate seemingly unbeatable they have dominated every opponent they have faced so far in this tournament facing off against four seed carrot one that was pushed heavily by one chris cato uh trying to get it across the finish line the nuts the spices the cream cheese frosting did it finish above chocolate negatory they but are. it gave they are going down. Gave chocolate its closest game yet, I believe. They, they, right? Yeah, no, yeah. it was very close. So it was fifty-four percent to forty-six percent. Now, if we could reseed things, does carrot maybe maybe they were a higher seed? Yeah, I'll give you that. Maybe they're a two seed. I'll give you that. Maybe yeah. they shouldn't have faced them in the frosted four. Maybe this was a better uh, championship game. I mean, it was it was uh, it was quite the fight. I, mean, I want to say too, for I, I know yeah. that I've been pushing carrot cake. I did not vote this past time, so none of those, none of that forty-six percent is mine. I should have gotten in there and stuffed the wait, ballots. Wait, wait. So we are asking people to vote, and you, you did. I know. I totally forgot. You did. I got. <laughs> I got busy. Okay. So. All right. Well, we thank you all, all of you that care more about the show than Chris does. All right. <laughs> On the other side. This was the one I actually called for an upset, and, mm -hmm. and I hope I didn't kind of sway the jury pool at all. Um, but we had Red Velvet. They were a two seed going in, and uh, they, I tell you, every week it was like they just got by. And I, if I could go back through and remember the cakes they went up against, I, I would recount all yeah. of it. But we'll have to wait for the— Hummingbird, uh, we'll I believe, We'll have to wait one. for the end of the year's— um, you know, uh, Luther Vandross yes, recap. Yes, one shining moment. The one yeah. shining moment mm -hmm. of cakes. Uh, but, yeah, so th they were kind of uh, getting knocked around all tournament, but still coming out They had out showed on top. some flaws. Mm -hmm. But going against three-seed cheesecake, and uh, I'll tell you what, cheesecake, a heck of a competitor. Ooh. Handing it to Red Velvet, 62% to Red Velvet's 38%. Wow. So there you have it. That's there is your champ championship matchup. This is the final week of voting. It's chocolate cake against cheesecake 
these are renowned favorites each and every year, and uh, there's people that are diehard. They they will they are committed to the cause for either one of these, uh, but only one can win. There can be only one Highlander. I, I guess I'm kind of stunned. I thought Red Velvet would make it a closer game than that. I mean, Red Velvet, if you ask a lot of people, is basically chocolate in disguise, chocolate with some cream cheese do frosting. You, do you think that maybe what people were thinking was? Look, we already got one chocolate in. Maybe like, so. We, we can't have a chocolate versus some other Versus type the of, chocolate with a cream cheese on it. Right. Yeah. yeah, maybe that was it. Maybe the voters wanted to see a little diversity at, in the championship game. So. Okay, I can get behind that. Hang on. Let me uh, bring something to bear here. Hold on. We got okay. to bring out a little special treat. Oh, I hope it's edible. Oh, oh, look at this. Oh, yes, sir. Well, you did well. Did you bake all of this yourself? Mm -hmm. How it, it is hard to make a cheesecake, isn't it? It's not easy, right? Yeah. Look at that. Beautiful display. You know, this right, is how it should is. always be. All right, this is um, our uh, championship yeah, matchup have, here. You have a fork that I've already licked. I always okay. have a fork. Very good. And then, uh, so what we have here is our, our championship matchup okay. here. We have a cheesecake with cherries on top. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if, if we're supposed to go with plain. Does it matter? I don't think it matters. I don't, I don't think it matters. I mean, so we're just gonna kind of give it a pre. Like, right. We're gonna preview it as we eat it, uh, and we also have a chocolate on chocolate, uh, chocolate. A very small slice that you cut for us. Yes. Right, look at that. All right. Okay. So you know, as you as you dig in there, I'll kind of say that mm. I do like the topping on mine. I like mm -hmm. goop. I, I like plain cheesecake. Well, but we're I, both goop fans. I also like yeah. goop. Yeah. Yeah. That's solid. Yeah. So this is, um, you know, it's. It's a New York cheesecake, so I think that there are different kinds. Uh, but this this was uh, on the label at least. It said it was New York. I wonder what makes it New York. Maybe I think I think the uh, maybe the it's a little harder. You think a little bit more aged? I don't know. It's but I don't think this doesn't look aged to me. No, mine it's seems good. That's good. I like it. Mine's a little soft. Did you refrigerate this? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. All right, we're gonna it's, be it's very. Good. Cheesecake is, is is decent. It's good. I it's like it. It's refreshing. It's right. I will say it's refreshing. I'm it's just cold. Not, just not a big cheesecake guy. I got to get to this double this chocolate on chocolate though. All right. Now this thing. I mean, this is this is a behemoth slice. Can I tell people where I got it from? No, please. This is a Smith family recipe, right? Yeah. No. Absolutely. Right. Where'd you got it. This is Wright's Gourmet House here in Tampa. Okay. Yeah. They do a they do a mean cake, and they're all pretty good. Yeah. But um, for my money, chocolate on chocolate. Hmm. Holy moly. Yeah, man. You know, this is the. I mean, the, this is the Yukon sure of the tournament my, here. I where think. my blood sugar is right now, but that is um, outstanding. You know what I, I'm going to do? I, and I, I normally wouldn't advise this. You're going to smash it. I'm going to smash it in your face. <laughs> I'm just going to eat some of the actual cake without getting any of the you frosting. You want the frosting? I do want all the right. frosting, but I want to judge for myself right. the, the moistness so our of the audio audience. He's going in for the bite again. This is just the cake. There's no frosting. There's mm -hmm. and, and this cake has substantial frosting and it has a lot of chocolate chips on top as well. But this is just cake and you could eat that by yourself by, by, itself. by itself. Now you would be slightly disappointed in the frosting, but it still has a strong chocolate flavor and is delicious. You could get by just eating the cake part, but now let's get the frosting. I mean, you had said that before when it came to pound cake that you don't need the frosting. Right. So would that be it's similar to a pound cake? Kind of stands on its own. Yeah. yeah, stands on its own. All right. So now he's got a big old honk. He's shoving it in that big pie hole of his. <laughs> it's a cake hole. <laughs> don't make cake come out my nose. All oh right. man, that he's icing. Already, he's, he's browned out one of his teeth with uh, <laughs> chocolate frosting. <laughs> no, uh, this icing is legit. Yeah. No, it that's is, good. I'm telling you. They, they, they can do a mean cake over there. and um, Yeah, I'm happy, though, with a chocolate cake that's the uh, like the chocolate on the yellow cake. I'm fine with that, too. Chocolate on white cake, I'll do that. You can call that chocolate cake. Here's the thing with that, though. It doesn't have to that be. That tends to be a more like milk chocolatey flavor mm -hmm. where I, I don't know. This is more like fudge. Like yeah. that, the flavor of like a chocolate cake is more fudge. And I think the frosting is the same. I think it's like a milk chocolate frosting. Yeah. But I don't know anything about the cake other than... It tastes real good, man. Look, I didn't. This one part of it has uh, chocolate chips on. Yeah, no, didn't even you notice gotta that. Got to get some of that. That's too much. Oh. Too much chocolate. No, that's it's wonderful. It's over chocolate. All right, so here's the deal. Uh, you now have you have seen it. You have watched us eat. Much to your uh, pain and agony, you've watched us eat this. Uh, go out and get you some this week. I mean, mm. go out and get like a slice. Go, taste it. Uh, renew the flavors in your mind. Refresh yourself on what these cakes taste like and then come to the ballot box yeah. and cast your ballot 
for the one that you believe is the greatest cake in the world. And that's that's kind of what we're doing here on this podcast. It's a it's a mighty task. This but. could be a uh, mismatch, though. I mean, I just want to say, I know the cheesecake fans are strong, but I'm curious I to see. I don't know if I if I picked out the world's greatest cheesecake, but this this chocolate cake, it may be up there. So I'm I, just I, saying in general, we could have, like, I don't know. This you think could, it's going to be a blowout? It could be a blowout. Uh, in, wait, in what, which direction? It, chocolate. Like, yeah. who, who's going to – you heard Ice Cube. Who's going to vote true. again? <laughs> well, and again, he's kind of – he's a great marketer himself. He is. I think he's just – he might have pushed it over the limit. So, But you have something to say about it. So go to fox13news.com. Go to the contest tab on the top of the page. Or you can hit the QR code on the screen right there, and that will take you to voting as well. Again, super simple to vote. And this week, it's just one. You just got to pick one. One time. Again, rifle through all of your fake email accounts and vote multiple times if you'd like. (laughs) Uh, But there you have it. Fantastic. The championship is set, and we are ready to crown a champ. We have got to get past this cake thing. It's almost swimsuit season here, and I'm struggling. That's like true. This, I've got, this whole cake thing's taking its toll on me. I look like a lava lamp under here. There's stuff moving around. <laughs> I mean, we've got we to gotta stop all this cake. That's, that's a good image. All right. We have a whole week to focus on that. Uh, big thanks to our guest, Ice Cube. Uh, much thanks to our production uh, crew, we got we got Sean in here helping out. We got Chris on the ones and twos. We got mm. BK uh, back there in the control room. Chris, all I have to say is today was a good day. <laughs> you got today that right. Today was a good day. Until it the was. next time we are on, there are no off days. Cheesecake's pretty good. <laughs>